Somebody say the ant knows what season it is. Proverbs 6, verses 8. Proverbs 30, verse 25. Said the ant are not a people strong. Hmm. Called the ant people. So I believe God had more to talk about than just ants. He was trying to get the people to see, I want you to be like the ant. They're not a strong people, yet they prepare their food, their meat in the summer. Somebody shout in the spirit at University Boulevard Church of God in Waycross, Georgia. It is harvest time. It is summertime. I'm not just talking in the natural because it's coming to the end of summer. But I'm telling you in the spirit, summer is beginning. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me over the last three days since Wednesday night, he said this revival is not a denominational revival. It's not just a revival for this church. It's a revival for this entire community, for this entire city. As many as the Lord God will call, they will come. Hello, somebody. It's going to be an embarrassment to you if you belong to this church when crowds start coming in, come on from other places and other churches get on fire, amen, and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost afresh and take it back to their pulpit and pews and you were absent, amen, and they find out when they invite you, where was you at? Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, he's just preaching, he's prophesying. Lord, been letting me see stuff. This is God's plan. This is God's plan. Somebody shout, this is God's plan. He wants to do something in this whole region, in this whole area. I'm telling you, if you'll get in this thing and learn from the ant, but understanding, knowing it's the summertime season, it's the harvest time, it's the time to reap, it's the time to pray, it's the time to fast, it's the time to seek God, it's time, Lord, I got to change your plans on your calendar if you can change them to get in God's presence because God says this is what you've waited on. This is what you've suffered for. This is what you've endured for. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Luke 4, 19 and 20, Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captain, to set and live them in bruise, preach recovering of sight to the blind, amen, and declare the year of the Lord. Somebody shout to declare the year of the Lord. I'm telling you, I prophesy by the spirit of God, this is the year, this is the time, this is the season. Thank you, man of God. Because last Tuesday night, most pastors would have said it's over. Thank you, man of God. Because even the first week, on that Monday night, or even that Wednesday night, most would have said it's concluded. And I promise you somewhere in your spirit or in your flesh, your flesh was probably thinking this just ain't it. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all think it's because of the anointing on my life. If it weren't for his anointing first to yield, to let me yield, I couldn't even be here right now. Come on, somebody. And you couldn't even been experiencing what the Holy Ghost is doing. Somebody ought to just stop and have a praise break for pastor. Come on, somebody, because I know he's a man just like I am or any other man. And somewhere in his flesh, he probably thought, man, this, maybe this ain't it. But he stayed with it. Come on, somebody. Some men him said, let's go. Let's go. And I see preachers all the time don't know that. And they stop because that weren't necessarily that breakthrough service. Look what would have been missed. And look what can be missed. Come on. If we miss what God's doing, what really prompted this message to Friday morning, my spirit, Wednesday night, the Holy Ghost said somewhere right here, prophetic, through my lips, through an interpretation of tongues. He said, he said, it's the time of your visitation. And he said, many have at times missed that time, and in doing so, their children have suffered. I mean, y'all remember seeing, hearing that? I do. It's on video. Matter of fact, every, every service from this revival thus far, it's in clips. I don't upload a two-hour video, though the whole video is there from each service. I just edit them in clips with different titles, but they're all there. Everything that's done in here is there. It's all on YouTube and Facebook. Hey, man, or at MarvinBoothMinisters.com. You can go there and link to it. Hallelujah. But when the Holy Ghost said that, I thought, man, 
what in the world? So I knew part of that. I knew, I knew the scripture in Luke 19, you know, 44, where Jesus in verse 41 is weeping over Jerusalem. Hello, he's, he's weeping over the city because they don't know who he is and he's about to die for them on the cross. They're about to kill him, crucify him. And, and, and in verse 44, he makes this statement. He said, he said, your children, listen to this, shall die within you. In other words, they, they're going, somebody maybe don't look that up for me. Luke 19, I believe it's uh, 44. Because the last part of the scripture, he said, because they knew not the time of their visitation. He talks about them laying even with the ground with their children within them. In other words, because you didn't know what time it was, not only will you suffer, but your children and your children's children are going to suffer. He didn't just talk about their children that was already out of the womb. He said, that's within you. Come on, somebody. In other words, God was prophesying through his son, amen, to his own people. Because you didn't understand what time it was, not only are you going to suffer, but generations after you are going to suffer. I'm telling you, this is a generation generational move of God. What God does in this revival, hallelujah, is not just for one church or one people. It's for a generation of churches and people that'll be here after us. Come on, somebody. Can you see that far ahead? Can you see that far ahead? He said the reason this is happening here it is, and level you and your children with you to the ground. They will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. See, Holy Ghost, anything he always says is always in the Bible. If it's prophetic and this is thus saith the Lord, you can find it there. And when I heard that and I was editing and I heard it again, hey man, a few days ago, I said, man, I got to find that. And so I remembered the last part of that scripture, but I forgot about that in there, but Holy Ghost didn't. When Holy Ghost is saying it, you'll say stuff you didn't even know was in the Bible. You'll find it later. Because he always is saying what he's always said. Hallelujah. Anybody hear Holy Ghost? Somebody shout, my children's going to be affected by it. You saying, well, my God, where is my children? They ain't in here. Not yet, they're not. They may not be here right now. Come on. Anybody hear Holy Ghost? Praise God. But if you can see that far ahead with me, somebody shout, it's summertime. That means it's harvest time. Listen, Proverbs 10 and 5, the Bible said uh, a son that sleeps during the summer during harvest time brings his father shame. Wow. A son that won't work when it's time to work brings his father shame. I don't want to bring my heavenly father shame. I want to bring him glory. Come on. I've even told the Holy Ghost I'll cancel my whole deer season. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Anybody hear Holy Ghost? I know it's about deer hunting time. I done been in the yard with my bow and arrow. Hello? But I'll let it all go. Come on, somebody. I won't bass fish, bass fish as much. Come on. Think about something you might just, God may be saying, what if? What if? What if the power of God hits this place? What if? Amen. That what we've seen has only just been a drop. Amen. Of a flood that he's getting ready to send. God said, I'm just looking to see if I can trust somebody with this. Will you be willing for me to send this type of move? Will you be willing for me to send this type of move where demons scream when they leave people, when they come in the altars. Hallelujah. Blind eyes are open and deaf ears hear and people come in in wheelchairs and have to walk the wheelchair out as they push it out. Come on somebody. And souls, souls, souls being born again, born of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, what if we're here till Christmas? Amen. Somebody's already thinking, oh God, like go to the end. Somebody say it's harvest time. It's summertime. Praise God. And it just be happening. I ain't got a thing booked either. Hallelujah. God ain't never booked me up like a lot of folks get booked up. They know years in advance. Sometimes I know a day in advance. 
Sometimes I might know a few days in advance. But God told me a long time ago, he said, that's the way I want you to operate as my prophet because though you don't know where you go and you'll sojourn into a land of promise like my son Abraham did. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I can do things through you this way. So I can do things, uh, amen, uh, that's long lasting. Uh, somebody shout, we need some eternal weight again. Uh, we need some long lasting stuff. Uh, I'm talking about something that sticks, uh, something that stays, uh, not just a little, amen, glory to God, fruitless shout uh, and a hallelujah and a spin and a roll around uh, and say we've been in revival. No, come on. Anybody want to see the devil cast out of people? Anybody want to see dead people raised? Uh, anybody want to see uh, sicknesses uh, that's been sad and termed incurable, healed uh, to the glory of God? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is a generational move. I've never said anything like this in any other pulpit in all my time preaching in 25 years. Hallelujah. But I know it's in my spirit because God put it there when I read this. He said, provide your meat. Go tell my people this day. Go provide their meat. Get their food. Do it now. It's harvest time. And here's how.